Good morning guys, time for another PHEV video. Today, we can actually quantify the electricity footprint that we use in the PHEV. I have found the current numbers, as current as I could get, 2016, and I did the calculations. Um, Ontario is a very green province in terms of energy production. We are 69% nuclear. Uh, and well green but we're nuclear we don't we don't emit co2 <laughs> we won't we won't discuss the nuclear factor um, <laughs> uh, hydro coal wind uh, more renewables every year so they actually state on the Canadian energy website 97 percent um, co2 free electricity generation for Ontario I found another use for the uh, PHEV yesterday. This is something I have to do in Northern Ontario about four times a year, where if you have a snowblower and a really long driveway like I do, you guys doing this know that you need a really good solid base because I have a gravel driveway. And so when the temperature warms up and we lose all of our snow, which is happening in the last couple of weeks here, um, and then it snowed again, I have to take the car and drive over the driveway and I don't snow blow I actually pack if we get three or four inches I pack it down to make a new base for the snow blower so I'm not digging into the rocks I can turn the blower I'm not throwing rocks it's just something I have to do and it takes about 40 minutes of driving up and down and around the driveway to pack it all down I did that yesterday in the car and didn't hardly use any electricity at all the battery was still showing full it took me 1.6 kilometers of driving to get that done so in today's test we're going to just add 1.6 kilometers onto our total driven because i didn't bother charging the car up again last night so we've actually got minus 13 degrees celsius according to the weather uh, network this morning and i've got running around to do so hey let's do um an in-between test i was going to wait for minus 20 but minus 13 is pretty good and we're just going to do our distance test in town driving the same route as always. What are we going to get at minus 13 degrees Celsius? When I put the car back in the garage yesterday, I reset the tripometer. And this just came out of the garage, so we're not showing the real temperature yet. It's showing minus 6, but it is minus 13. We got no heat. No heated seats. Windows that are fogging up already. Going to crack the windows here. So uh, as I predicted, guys, everything is nice and frozen and we're actually rolling along pretty good this morning. I'm hoping to see some good numbers today. Okay, so we've come down to temperature, guys. Uh, it's actually showing minus 14, which is colder than the weather station uh, noted, but eh, it's close enough. And the gasometer over here is showing 30 kilometers. So I don't know if you guys noticed that, but I actually forgot to put the car in EV mode there. So um, what's making it start, I had some people uh, saying online that they had the same issue if their car is starting. It's because your heaters are on, guys. Um, the car here was minus five when we started it in the garage this morning. And um, without the heater on, the engine didn't fire. Okay, so let's talk electric numbers. I found a study by a group called TAF. Uh, which is the Atmospheric Fund. They were established in 1991, and it's a scientific group based out of Toronto um, who do reporting for Canadian Energy Institute, I guess. Um, so there's a report online that you guys can read. I'll give you the title of it. It is a clearer view on Ontario's emissions, a practical guideline for electricity emission factors. Okay, and in that study, they give us the breakdown per kilowatt hour of CO2 generated in Ontario. Now, they also state in there a couple of numbers. Um, they're going to give us Canada's 2017 National Inventory Report number stated 43 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. Did you catch that? 43 grams. I couldn't believe that number when I read it. So now what TAF has done, the Atmospheric Fund here, they've gone ahead and looked at some other things, uh, hourly basis, uh, marginal emissions factors, which will call for, uh, depending on hourly, how much energy needs to be created, they're saying there's a difference in which plants are fired, whether it's uh, hydro, coal, wind, whatever. Um, 
they're saying that that number is a little bit low. The number they came up with, and they go through, they tell you the scientific methodology they used. Um, the number they came up with was a whopping 159 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. So to be fair, like I always am, I'm not going to use the low number. I'm not going to use the Canada, Canada um, National Inventory Report number of 43 grams. We're going to go with Taft's number of 159 grams per kilowatt hour. Yes, it's bloody freaking cold in here right now. If you can see my breath, <laughs> I can see my breath. So to calculate what your electricity consumption is, you're going to need to know what your average kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers is. Fortunately, I keep track of that information every time I get in the vehicle and out, and I have averaged it, and mine is 19 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Secondly, you're gonna to need to know the number of kilometers that you've traveled on electricity. I also keep track of that. Now, we haven't gone a year yet in the PHEV, but I am projecting these numbers over a year, so, my number is going to be 13,000 kilometers on electricity this year. So if we know that 19 kilowatt hours takes us 100 kilometers, if we times that by 10, 190 kilowatt hours takes us 1,000 kilometers. So our projected number for the year is 13,000 kilometers traveled on electricity, so we need to times 190 times 13, which gives us 392,730 grams of CO2. Of course, we need to now convert that back into kilograms, so we're gonna divide by 1,000, which gives us a total number of 392.73 kilograms of CO2 emitted into the atmosphere from the electricity that I use to charge my car here in Ontario, Canada. So now, if we take last week's number of 2,953.2 kilograms of CO2 that we saved uh, by not burning fuel this year, we can subtract our new number of 392.73 kilograms, because that's what we're using for the electricity side of things, and we get a total of 2,560.5 kilograms. And that is our total carbon footprint for this car, including what we use for electricity. So 392 kilograms as a percent of 2,953 is 13%, which is right in that area that I had guesstimated around 12 to 15%. Um, so not too bad of mental calculating for myself there. So all of these numbers are going to vary, guys, depending on your driving style, how far you drive, how your electricity is generated in the area you live in. If you're a coal-fired plant, your numbers are going to be different. Um, but for here in Ontario, those are my numbers, and really good numbers. If there's any doubt in your mind, guys, as to uh, the benefits of driving a vehicle like this, even if you're in an area where there's dirty uh, electricity generation, then you simply could take it into your own hands and install solar panels. My intention is to put in solar uh, panels in the backyard and run the EV charging station completely off of solar next year, as in the future I intend to get uh, my wife's next vehicle. I'm hoping to go purely electric on that, but that's something up here in the north we've touched on before. We don't have a very good infrastructure, so we would probably have to rely on a vehicle like this being a hybrid to take on longer trips down to Toronto, uh, Sudbury, you know, places where you're not gonna get a fast charge very easily up here. That's too funny, I just went into McDonald's to uh, grab a coffee this morning, and when I came out there was another Mitsubishi Outlander owner parked beside me and she was admiring the electric car. So I just spent 10 minutes chatting with her um, about the electric and uh, told her about the channel and to come and check out all the videos. So I'm spreading the word, guys. <laughs> And Mitsubishi, if you're watching this, I am up over 120,000 views on the video, so anytime you guys want to send me a 2019 to compare against the 2018, I would gladly take it and test it. I was just thinking for this test, um, we didn't plug in overnight, which isn't a big deal, and uh, we've got to add 1.6 kilometers onto our trip total here, but I'm going to look at the dog and see what our starting uh, amp, amp hours is. We know that 35.1 is where we've been at 
uh, in the last couple of videos. So I'm just curious to see how much did we lose last night by not plugging in. I know uh, um, Andy in Australia, EV Unplugged, uh, was complaining that his was dropping quite a few amp hours while sitting. I've never really looked at that on mine, and maybe that's something we'll look at in the future. Nearing the end of our test here, guys, the temperature has come up to minus 11 degrees Celsius. Thank God, I can't feel my toes or fingers right now. <laughs> this testing has got to stop. No, it can't stop. We need numbers, we need real world numbers, and that's what I'm giving you. So I know you guys are gonna ask where I got my average kilowatt hour number from, and I'm using the number right here from the eco information screen on the PHEV itself. So, I mean, I know that's probably not 100% accurate, but it gives us something that we can measure by. It's 36.9 kilometers. We've gotta add 1.6 on top of that. So, 38. 38.5 not as good as I thought we were gonna do but uh, that might have something to do with not having the car plugged in last night we might have lost a little bit of amp hours we'll check that on the dog it's very close to what we got uh, in our regular test at zero degrees show you guys the eco information actually the dog um, I have two recordings from today neither one of them is the complete trip I guess it conked out again um, I'm gonna have to get a new dongle guys mine doesn't work very good but I, what I wanted to check was our starting amp hours and if we check this it's actually quite a bit lower than um, I thought it was gonna be look at this we're showing the battery at 31.8 amp hours so yesterday we did the driveway, 1.6 kilometers, and um, and then it sat overnight unplugged. So now that makes me wonder. Next time we're gonna we're gonna do some testing with this battery to see how much I'm losing while the car is sitting. But uh, so for 31.8 amp hours, we got 38.5 kilometers, which is is pretty good. Um, but I knew it was lower than we should have got, and that's the reason why right there. Yep, it is that cold. PHEV testing leads to a hot tub.